वेलकम फ्रेंड्स सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद अ न्यू टॉपिक फ्रॉम सॉलिड मैकेनिक्स द टॉपिक इज प्रिंसिपल स्ट्रेसेस सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग विद द एक्चुअल टॉपिक लेट मी गिव यू सम ब्रीफ आउटलाइन हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू प्रोसीड सो वी शैल बी लर्निंग इनिशियली वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ स्ट्रेसेस सो बेसिकली वी विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट थ्री डायमेंशनल स्ट्रेसेस व्हिच इज आल्सो नोन एज स्ट्रेस टेंसर देन टू डायमेंशनल स्ट्रेसेस और व्हिच इज आल्सो नोन एज प्लेन स्ट्रेस सिस्टम then we shall talk about the transformation of stresses transformation of stresses from one plane to another plane so that is the third point after that we shall discuss about principal stresses and principal planes having understood the concept of principal stresses and principal plane we would like to discuss about a graphical method to understand the principal stresses and stress transformation so the graphical method is also known as mohr circle so we'll be discussing about mohr circle in brief and how we can use a mohr circle to obtain the value of principal stresses principal planes as well as how we can use mohr circle for transformation of stresses from one particular plane to another plane okay so this will be the outline of our chapter now to begin with what we have discussed so far so i am going to explain you the concept of three dimensional stresses so let me give you a very simple example suppose we have a body here we can take any body of any uh, shape so i am considering an irregular shape of body let me say this is an irregular shape of body and this particular body is supported at some points so we have support here at point a it can also have a support here at point b and we are subjecting this body to various forces so it there may be point load acting over here there may be a point load may be acting like this or there may be a variable force acting on it different types of forces may act on a body there may be variable force maybe like this a moment also might be acting on the body so there are various types of loads acting on the body so if i take a small element inside the body in the form of square so this uh, will be experiencing various forces over its surface so if you look at this particular element it is basically in the form of a, a three dimensional cubical box so it will be experiencing various stresses on its surface there are overall eight surfaces so all these surfaces will be getting some kind of loading and if i draw this picture in a elaborate form so let's see what kind of forces are going to act what kind of stresses are going to act on its surface that is what we would like to understand so this is the same element what i have shown there i have drawn in a larger scale and we are trying to understand what are the various stresses we are going to see on the faces so let me name this axis so you will see on this face this particular face or plane is perpendicular to x axis so this plane is called as x plane the plane perpendicular to x axis this plane the, the horizontal plane is perpendicular to the y axis so we call it as y plane and the plane perpendicular to z axis is called as z plane this is going to be the nomenclature so if i want to write this this is nothing but x plane this i am going to call as uh, y plane because it is perpendicular to y axis and this i am going to call as z plane so this is perpendicular to z axis like that now having understood what is x y and z plane so the plane is named based on the concept that it is perpendicular to that particular axis so if plane is perpendicular to x axis it is x plane similarly y plane perpendicular to y axis and z plane is perpendicular to z axis okay so now let me show the stresses which are acting on the surface so let me take x plane so x plane will have three stresses acting on it so one is going to normal stress along x axis this is normal stress one is going to be the tangential stress which is shear stress along y axis and one is tangential stress or shear stress along z axis so these are three stresses acting on this particular plane so one is normal stress and two are shear stresses okay so this is normal stress acting on x plane and these two are tangential or shear stresses so this is called as normal stress sigma acting on x plane so first surface letter indicates on which plane is acting and it is acting in x direction so second letter indicates the direction this is called as sigma x x this is tangential so i am going to call it as tau it is acting on x plane so tau x and the direction is the z direction you can see so tau x z here this is also in tau which plane x plane and the direction is the y direction so we have three stresses one is along x axis along z axis along y axis so like that you have three stresses on this particular face explain similarly you will have 
three stresses here also three stresses here also one is normal stress and there are two stresses those will be shear stresses so the normal stress is acting on y plane so it is sigma acting on y plane and in y direction the so sigma y y shear stress on y plane x direction shear stress on y plane and z direction so i hope it is clear the similar things would also be followed on this particular plane so let me take on this also so you will have a normal stress act along z direction something like this and then you will have a shear stress along x direction and shear stress this is going to be sigma z z because acting on z plane in z direction this is tau because shear stress acting on z plane in y direction shear stress acting on z plane in x direction so i have only shown you uh, the stresses acting on these three planes so the opposite planes will also have same stresses okay this is towards right sigma xx so you will have here towards left similarly tau xx xy is upward here so here tau xy will be downward okay so if i show all this then it will be very complicated picture but remember each phase the opposite phase will have same kind of stresses just the direction would be reversed so overall how many uh, direct stresses we have if i want to list them down so if i list down so we will have sigma xx sigma yy sigma zz these are basically direct stresses and we shall also have shear stresses acting on x plane in y direction shear stresses acting on x plane in z direction okay so i have taken two shear stresses acting on x plane shear stresses acting on y plane in x direction two shear stresses acting on y plane in z direction right and third shear stress acting on z plane in x direction and shear stress acting on z plane in y direction if you look at there so we have direct stresses as well as shear stresses now we have understood so if a member is subjected to number of forces or stresses if you take a small element three dimensional element so the faces or each face of this particular three dimensional element would experience these kind of stresses right so this if collectively if i write, i write down all these stresses in a matrix form so that is called as stress tensor matrix so you can write down this in a matrix form so we will have a sigma which is a stress tensor and it is given as sigma xx so first we take all the stresses acting on x plane shear stress acting on x plane in y direction shear stress acting on x plane in z direction so we will also have shear stress acting on y plane in x direction direct stress acting on y plane in y direction shear stress acting on y plane in z direction then shear stress acting on z plane in x direction shear stress acting on z plane in y direction and normal stress acting on z plane in z direction okay so if you look at here this first particular row indicates the stresses acting on x plane the second row indicate stresses on y plane and the third row indicate stresses on z plane right so this way we have understood the various stresses acting on a three dimensional element taken within the body subjected to various loadings as shown in the figure right now we would like to know what is two dimensional stresses or plane stresses so let me show you the diagram just to simplify that whole thing the same diagram i'm going to draw again here but in this particular case i'm going to put one note that if the stresses only act in two directions it means the third component is zero here let's say that is z component so the third component that is z component of stresses is zero okay so what is that meaning of uh, this particular statement if i take explain for instance so we have only the stress in x component or y component there won't be stress in the z component so like this so you have only stress in x direction or you will only have stress in y direction there is no component in the z direction similarly here we'll have stress in y direction no problem 
we will have stress in y direction, stress in x direction, but no stress in z direction. So similarly, the same thing would appear here as we have already discussed. You will have stress in x direction and you will have stress in y direction also, but you will not have stress in z direction. On this plane also, you will have stress in y direction, no problem. And you will also have stress in x direction, but there won't be any stress in z direction. So what about this particular, we have taken all this x plane and y plane. This I have shown, so this is the opposite plane to this, this is the opposite plane to this, okay. What about this particular plane, z plane? Since there is no component in z direction, so there is no stress on the z. In this case, z is third plane. So there is no component in z direction, there is no question of having stress on this particular plane. So third plane is free from stress. Third plane I have taken here, z plane for instance, you can take any, any plane as third plane. So we can say that sigma zz is 0, tau zx is also 0, tau zy is also 0, right? This is here. The third component, z component of stress is 0 means tau xz is 0 and tau yz is also 0. The was second point. So here stress is only acting in two direction. okay? This whole diagram can be simplified. We can also simplify this diagram a little bit in two dimensional actually. So it will be having these are normal stresses. Shear stress also would come like this. So this is sig sigma xx. This is sigma yy. Sigma yy normal stresses. Shear stress acting on x plane in y direction. Shear stress acting on y plane in x direction. Shear stress acting on x plane in y direction. Shear stress acting on y plane in x direction. Okay. So you can write down in two dimensional sense also like this. So if you remember, this is going to be your x direction, this is your y direction and this is origin. So we have represented a three dimensional element having only two dimensional stresses acting on it, which is called a plane stress system. And also we have represented a simplified a two dimensional diagram, which only represents the planes carrying the stresses. Okay. You can also write down two dimensional stress matrix. So we will not write any z components. So we'll have sigma xx, tau xy, tau yx, sigma yy. So this is two dimensional stress matrix. So I guess it is very much clear to all of us that what is a three dimensional stress system and what is a two dimensional stress system, right?